Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 28 of FTB Revelations, where today I want to start off by making the rat away. Um, I am slowly losing the radiation that's affected me. Uh, I think it was, I don't know where it came from. Uh, there, there's, there's a small amount of radiation generally in the environment. Um, I think it was probably just, you know, like the holding of that uranium, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but we're gonna get a few machines here to help us out, and they're gonna serve us in the long run anyway, because... We're going to eventually get into nuclear craft, so it's not going to be a big deal. So I just wanted to knock this out real quick and, and make some rad away and see what's all involved in making this stuff. Because it looks like a good time, right? Uh, every room is 300 rads at a rate of 5 rads per tick. Okay, cool. That's not bad. So currently I'm sitting on... Where did I put my Geiger counter? There it is. 462 rads. So I should be able to knock this out like with like one and I'll be pretty low on radiation. So let's make a few machines here, right? Um, so to get started, should I should I be teaching these things or me? I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna need a few tough alloys, which I can alloy smelt ferroboron and lithium, huh? All right, so let's do that. So we're gonna want a little bit of steel. I made, uh, I made a few things uh, between episodes here. Hey, boron dust does not smelt? Really? Weird. Is that weird? Or am I like have something off here? Oh, there we go. Haha. <laughs> it does. I just, you know, a little, little bit of dire derps, that's all. Do the thing, buddy. Yeah. I like that Geiger counter thing, though. Like, and I mean, like, I can understand if some people are thinking, like, they wouldn't enjoy uh, the, the whole radiation thing. I totally get that. Uh, I think it's cool though. Like I think it's it's going to be a fun, a fun mechanic to play with. So you know I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it a little bit and see what it's like. Because I don't think I've ever actually played with it in a legit world. Um, when I did my nuclear craft spotlight, I uh, I talked about radiation and how it works. But I don't think I ever actually like legitimately had it turned on in a world that I was playing survival-ish, right? So I'm just interested in trying it out. It might be it might be fun. Okay, so there's your ferroboron alloys. And then we combine those with lithium to get some tough alloys, right? So let's get like eight in there. Does that sound like a good number? Seems good to me. I like it. And that may or may not be enough uh, to make all the machines we need, but we'll find out. Okay. So we need a fluid infuser, right? So we're gonna need one of you, and we're gonna need some basic plating, which is going to be graphite dust. Okay, cool. Now, if I remember correctly, it's something like graphite ingots is like, isn't that just smelted coal? Yeah, it is. Nice. Works for me. I'm gonna sag mill that. I'm only gonna do half of them. Just because. I don't have a good answer to why. We'll figure it out. Just trying to organize my inventory a little bit here. Right? Alright, just cooking up a few more resources. Let's see here. So we've got now a fourth one of these, which means we can get a fluid infuser. Yeah, pretty close at least. Just need one of these dudes, and now we're good for a fluid infuser. Yeah, we are. All right, so that's one. Uh, fluid enricher needs another one of these dudes, and some more of these. Okay, I made a bunch of some things here, but that is rapidly running out of my tough alloys. But that's okay. We'll be fine. Do I saw some of those solenoid thingies. Nope. Just get a few of them because I suspect I'll need a bunch. Like I said, we're not like super getting into nuclear craft yet. We will. We will. We will totally do nuclear craft as part of this series, I promise. Uh, but we're just not, you know, quite getting there yet. Uh, so what am I low on here now? Steel again. Really? I'm low on steel again? I made a lot of steel. Like, I made a lot of steel. Um, yeah, buddy. I made a lot of steel. Just putting away some stuffs, don't mind me. Okay. There you go. Technically that should be good. 
All right, well that's working. I need another a couple of nether bricks, huh? Do I have any of those? Nah, but we have another rack. Somewhere. Probably in here. Perfect timing. Look at that. All right, so I need another one of you, right? So these guys are done. We're knocking out this one next. So that's going to need another set of tough alloys. Boy, that's gonna get uh, expensive quick, but that's okay. Lots of steel in this setup. That's uh, that's what it comes down to. But that's okay. We'll uh, we'll automate all this at some point, obviously too. If I were if I were going deeper into this, I would probably automate it more. But you know, actually, I have a lot of ferro boron alloy right now, so I could probably hold off on making any more steel. Oh, that's fast. That is fast. I love how fast that is. Isn't that great? Okay, so there's your chemical reactor, and then we just need our melter. Just putting all this junk away. And then we're gonna get back to blood magic, but I just wanted to like, fix my radiation issue. More steel, womp womp womp. I used it all, didn't I? How am I for pulverized coal? Eh, not as much as I would like to have, to be honest with you. I know, I'm addicted to tech accelerators. What do you want from me? They're so good, though. To be fair, you guys probably don't want to sit there watching the smelting operation, right? Like, I figured you don't. I figured you don't. Hey, perfect amount. Nice. And then that's the melter. Nice. Okay, cool. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. So now we need sugar. Oh, boy. We need more sugar than that. Uh, hot and spicy. You know it. Did I replant sugarcane, or did I, like, break that whole sugarcane setup and then not replant it and only have one on me? Yeah, the, the, the thing I just said, that sounded really dumb. I did that. Uh, going to get more sugarcane. Okay, so a couple questions about SNAD, because I kind of forget some of the mechanics of it. Does SNAD not require water for sugarcane, or am I wrong about that? I might be wrong about that. It may or may not, I forget. Okay, it still does. Uh, do I still have my reservoir on me? Uh, I have a bucket of water, does that count? I guess, no, I have the reservoir, that's cool. We'll hang on to the bucket for, for later. Now the other question is, does this thing still do that redstone signal? Or like if you give a redstone signal to SNAD, it makes it grow faster? Uh, why yes, it does. You know what else makes it grow faster? <laughs> Dyer's favorite item. <laughs> I think. I thought I thought I thought you could tick accelerate stat. I mean, it's not a tile entity, I don't think. But I thought for some reason you could tick accelerate it. Maybe I'm crazy. But hey, no, let's get a uh, timer of some sort. What do we got here? Uh, RF tools timer. That should work because I think you can make those pretty quick, right? I think so. Sounds like a good time. Delay of one. Today of five. Maybe one's too fast. Now we're cooking. <laughs> that is fun. That is a good time. Um, what do we got? Uh, Auto breaker from Actually Editions. That sounds like fun. Now refresh my memory. Auto breaker from Actually Editions. But do you admit to an adjacent inventory by chance? I'm not entirely sure how that works. We're gonna find out. Oh, hello. How are you? You don't automatically adjacent inventory it. But we could totally, like, item duct it, right? Okay, that's ridiculous. I mean, I love it. It's great. Now let's get one of these dudes. Uh, 
All right. Yeah, I forgot about you. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where are you at? This thing. Blacklist at recent. Grass break. Add recent grass break. There you go. Cool. I'm gonna remove grass hit actually. Yeah. That's cool. How cool is that? Right? A little bit of sugar cane going on? We could do the same to be fair. Um I did it, uh, are you causing junk updates by chance? Eh, a little bit. A little bit. I don't want to have like flickering redstone. Uh, and I think if I placed a redstone doohickey there, including conduits, do conduits do that? Because I'm curious like if I could do the same thing, right, uh, with this. Like if I did this, right, does this work? I mean, that seems to be working. Is that causing a lot of chunk updates? A little bit. Now, if I give you a redstone signal, do you stop? Yeah, I don't think it's actually causing chunk updates, so that's actually good. Oh, no, wait, no, no, you don't stop with a redstone signal. Pause while redstone active. Hey, buddy, uh, redstone's active? I'm just letting you know. Yeah, see, that's causing chunk updates. I'm gonna try the block breaker from random things, just, you know, because. And go. Oh, there we go. Okay, now are you, are you fast enough? Yeah, you are, okay, good. See, that one automatically uh, outputs to the inventory behind it, so that's kind of cool. That's what I was looking for, one that automatically spit out to the back. So that prevents the need for item conduits, right? Just a little bit more compact. What do you mean I can only keep it night? It's getting to be night. Let's go, Chief. Um, I'm just looking for a way to turn this thing off when I want to. Uh, I already made it a little bit more compact. The only problem I'm having is it's being a little bit funny with redstone conduits. Uh, even with nothing here, right? Like nothing at all. Right. Um, if I place this here and say West output red, it's like for some reason, I don't know what that's all about. I don't know if it's causing, I don't know, something weird, right? Isn't that weird? It's a little bit weird. So I'm going to try a structure duct. Let's see if this works. So I should be able to go like, ow, there. There and there, and you are going to be output here and here, and then you're going to be the timer, and that's working, and then you're going to be a lever that turns them off when I don't want them running forever. Haha, <laughs> cool, right? All right, so let me get another uh, drawer. And I mean, this is obviously the best place for this thing to sit, right? Like we, you know, we totally want this to be here, right outside my base in this weird corner place. Not, not over here where all my other farm is, but over here, right outside my door. That seems like a logical place for things to live. No, I think people are going to yell at me if I do that. All right, so let's set this up over here in a relatively compact fashion, right? Uh, so you're going to want a water source block here with a snad here. Oops. And there, right? And then we're gonna want this guy here. And you're gonna be my sugar cane and you're gonna be my cactus. And we're gonna have this dude and this dude as output. And this dude is input. And the timer. Boop, boop. And the lever. And my understanding about that whole like timer story, by the way, is, um, where's my breaker? I made two of them. 
there they are. All right, and then the drawer that already has sugar cane in it. So you're gonna go here. Hopefully you can do that correctly. We'll see how much of a problem this becomes when we turn the lever off. And not ideal. Not ideal. I was hoping that when it grew, Yeah, that's not working. But what might work... Is that? Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. That's cool, right? Cloth break is the cactus sound. That's interesting. Cool. <laughs> That's neat. I love it. All right, I'll just let you guys go slow for now, but if I need to speed things up, I can totally do that. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, we're just having fun now. You can tell we're just having fun, right? Uh, half of you is going to go into the manufactory uh, to make that stuff. And then we also need molten sugar, so that's going to go into the melter. Start making me some molten sugar, Chief, would you? Oh, you probably just need to be actual sugar. And I'm just going to make like a bunch of this stuff and we'll see what we get out of it, right? Uh, so for you, right away fluid equals molten sugar plus glowing mushrooms. Um, now, we're going to want some mushrooms. Uh, that's a cool way to get those. I mean, obviously there's the nether. There's the spores recreator, huh? And then the phytogenic insulator. We have a few of these guys. What's a spores recreator do? Spores recreator. When provided with power, one bucket of water and a mushroom of any kind, it will grow them internally. Really? Well, let's try that out. I've never tried that before. Spores recreator, huh? Do we have most of this stuff? We do. I mean, this is a farming machine, right? Makes sense. Um, did I ever hook you up to, I did hook you up to that stuff. Well, that's cool. I should probably like hook these guys up to these drawers in some intelligible way, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Uh, power, 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 power. Where's power hanging out? I'm just gonna tap some in here. Cause what I could always do then is extract, right? Uh, so I need to give you water. So that's a bucket of water and a mushroom. And does it consume the water? It does, wow, that is just making tons of mushrooms for me, isn't it? That is cool. Though it eats the mushrooms and doubles them, basically. Um, so I have to feed it water, and then I have to loop the mushrooms in. All right, that's not bad. It's not bad. I could probably, I could probably figure that out, right? Uh, give me a filter here. A basic one should be fine, right? Right. So on the east, you're going to extract uh, on green. On the up here, you're going to insert with a filter. I don't know if I need to filter it, but I'm doing it anyway of mushrooms, right? Uh, because what I'm also going to do is make it a high priority so that it's the first place mushrooms go. Right? And then we could just, you know, sneak over here. And uh, what we could do is have another drawer. Mm, okay, right. For mushrooms. Okay. And now we just need to get you water. Do we have an extra aqueous laying around? Look at me being on the ball. Accidentally, that is. Uh, so I could probably just put here and here. Buddy Aqueous. 
Hey, you're not the aqueous accumulator. You're a block breaker. That's the wrong thing, direwolf. Should work. <gasps> Fluid water. Yay. So now we just set you on the east to extract always active. And what should happen is it should fill this thing uh, entirely with mushrooms. And then once they're full, the next destination will be over here. Cool, right? It's not too shabby. I think that's pretty neat. And then we can come over here and get our glowing mushrooms that we're going to need for the rat away. Nice. And there you go, glowing mushrooms, cool. All right, so the right away also needs ethanol, which is a chemical reactor mixture of water and molten sugar. So the melter's still making molten sugar, that's cool. Uh, we're going to want the chemical reactor to combine the molten sugar that we're getting. Let's get a couple more reservoirs. Uh, and, and like I said, I'm not like fully automating this just yet. I'm just kind of playing with it and figuring it out and then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. That sound like a fair deal? I like it. Quick nap. Filtering for dummies. Okay. So then you, water, and sugar will make the ethanol that we need. Right now, if we wanted to, we could get some like speed upgrades from nuclear. I think those are the cheap ones to get, you know, reasonably cheap. Um, the energy upgrades are a little bit more expensive, but I mean, it's not doing too bad right now. Hey, we get carbon dioxide from that too. Neat. So then there's your ethanol. And that in a fluid enricher. And then finally, we're going to need a fluid infuser. And we'll probably set this all up in some kind of automated fancy way, right? Um, but for now, we're just kind of getting it sorted, right? So, like, you are ethanol, right? Yes. You go in there with the glowy mushrooms. And that looks cool to me. Now, uh, redstone side configuration, nope. I can clear the carbon dioxide with a shift click. I was wondering if there was a way I could automate that. Like if there's like an automatically void type thing. Now, how much do I need for this right away? 250 millibuckets and a little bioplastic. That ain't too bad. So you go in there, whatever you got so far. That should give me three right -aways, so that's pretty good. So actually, you know, this right away stuff is pretty cheap once you get the machines up and running. Okay, ridding the rads, nice. So let's get our Geiger counter out here, right? So if we check, we have 452 rads. See how my radiation's dropping now? And I'm getting into the happy zone? Much better. And my weakness is gone, hooray! And because that was so easy to make, let's go ahead and munch the other one. And now my radiation is completely gone, and that's awesome, right? Um, U rads is like a really small amount of, of radiation. Um, we don't have to worry about it too much, essentially. But yeah, that's easy to manage, and that would be very easy to automate, FYI. Now, why are you no running? Is it two? Oh, it's three glowing mushrooms per. Okay, I mean, it's still not bad, right? Yeah. So, pretty cool stuff. I'm going to just leave this stuff here now. Because, A, it was mostly me just, like, wanting to try out how hard it is to actually make that stuff the right away. And, B, I just wanted to kind of play with it a little bit. And I feel like I've accomplished that goal. So, I'm on board with what we got going on. All right. So, uh, now let's do a little bit more blood magic-y stuff, right? How are you doing, blood magic all? Not too shabby. Oof. I like that healing spell. I really like that healing spell. I just gotta say. It's pretty nice. It is really pretty nice. All right, so if I want some runes. Also, a lot of people keep telling me 
a lot of people keep commenting about this, that I have the Infinity Booster cards in here. So remember, when you the, the way it's default set up, the wireless range thingy, is that you can use Infinity Booster cards, um, I think, right? These go in here, right? And now we have infinite energy, right? So each booster card is consumed as I have my infinite range on. It's not like I just put the card in there and I'm done. Like, I need a lot of those, and I'm kind of saving them for when I really need them. Uh, so the infinity booster cards, not something that you want to always use, right? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm purposely not turning them on. But what I could probably do, now that we have a lot of ender pearls, right? Um, how many of these wireless boosters can I stick in here? I think I could fit, I don't know, a few more. Where's my pulverizer? It's a pulverizer that gets this done, right? Okay. Let's put eight in here and see what happens. Oh, good, we can do that, sweet. Eight more. I forget like how much it can fit in there, but hey, that's that's getting pretty good. Energy usage 105 AE per tick. So we're using a lot of RF to, to maintain that wireless range, but not, not an insurmountable amount, right? Yeah, no, we still have a net gain of power going on here. A pretty solid net gain at that. So I'm not worried about it, right? Um, remember, this thing, you know, turns off once it gets to a certain threshold. So the fact that we're currently draining uh, and still getting plus 800, that's good. And ideally, that means that I can access Doom, bound to die roll 20, uh, this guy here. So now can I get runes? Sweet. Okay. So we're totally going to want eight of these so that we can get a tier two altar. And we could use, like, upgraded runes for things, but yeah, I always forget about that stuff. And I always forget, is it the corners or the edges that actually work for the Tier 2 rune? Now, I'm pretty sure this is a Tier 2 altar, but to check, we're going to need, from Blood Magic, uh, a thingy, the Divination Sigil, right? So we're going to need a Blank Slate and an Alchemy Array. And these are made with Redstone, Bone Meal, Coal, and Gunpowder. So, redstone, bone meal, coal, and gunpowder. You do the thing with this in here. Remember, this is your this is your charge, right? We're using stuff here. Ta-da! And there's your alchemy ashes, and then we need some redstone. And I always forget what goes first, but I think it's you, and then you. Hooray! Alchemy, go! Sweet. So this will do two things. One, it'll tell me how much LP is currently stored in my personal soul network, right? So, so each player gets their own personal soul network that you can charge uh, using the orb that we just created. Okay. So the orb we just created, wherever it is, there it is, the weak blood orb. There's several tiers of orb, as you can see, as we rank up here. Uh, we'll get a second tier, actually, when we get it now. Uh, we'll get this cooking, at least. Uh, let's do this and this. And that'll help. I'm totally cheating with the healing myself thing, by the way. Totally cheating but don't care. Yeah. Um, so the different tiers, so when you right-click an orb, it damages you and gives you 200 LP, right? You can also stick the orb right into the blood altar and it'll absorb the life points from the altar and put it into your soul network for you. Uh, so that's a way to automate it. So that's pretty cool. Okay, with that stuff taken care of, right? So you're well on your way to making the tier two blood orb, I think. 5,000 LP is all it's needed. So that should be about done, I would think. It should be really close to done. There you go. 
And then remember, it's not bound to a player until someone right clicks it, and then it's bound, right? Nice. And the higher tier orb determines how much LP you can get in your soul network. So with a weak blood orb, you can get a small amount of LP. Apprentice blood orb, you can get more LP stored in your soul network, all the way up to master and maybe archmage. Is archmage a thing? Yeah, it is. That's the top tier, right? And that needs another star and a tier five altar. So we do now have a tier three altar, I believe, right? Or a tier two, I mean, tier two altar. Nice. So what I'm going to do is get some stone and start making more of these dudes. The one other thing I want to do is I had this guy on the north inserting up to 10 of these. It's not what I wanted. I always forget which hotkeys, because every mod does the hotkey a little different. But I want like, not 10, but 32. That's how much of those I want. Cool. So now what you'll do is you'll run uh, if we have more than 50%, right? Is that the number I went with? There yeah, that's it. Cool. All right, so let's wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time and play with a little bit more blood magic. This turned into more of a uh, radiation dealing episode than I thought, but we were having fun setting up an automated farm over here. That was pretty cool, right? Flip lever, get tons of sugarcane and cactus. Not too shabby. Um, yeah, Snad is weird. It, like, reacts to a redstone pulse, and it causes a block update every time it gets one. Um, I think that was originally considered a bug, uh, but then the author made it, like, a feature, because, I don't know. But, yeah, it works, so it's cool. Donald 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.